So, uh, as you remember from my last video, I was getting a lot less power than I should have been, or than I was expecting. So I did some testing a couple weeks ago, and I found, or actually last week, I found that uh, one of the cylinders had uh, only 115 psi of pressure on a compression test. I had a 185, 165, 165, and 115. So I took the valve cover off, took two of the lifters out, or as Subaru calls them, uh, hydraulic lastic lifters. Two of them seemed to be functioning, you know, good. I was able to squeeze the oil out of them, but two of them were solid. So maybe some trash got inside of them and, and uh, locked them up and it was keeping the valve open. I don't know. So, I ordered a, a few new lifters, and uh, I'm going to put the lifters in, the two new lifters in today, put it back together, do a compression test. If the compression boosts up, then great, I think I'll fix the problem. If not, then I'm going to tear it back down and take this head off and inspect a little further. I do not think it's anything to do with rings, because I'd have blow-by, I have I have no smoke coming out of the exhaust system. Uh, the engine runs fine. Uh, the, the oil's clean. The, the uh, coolant's clean. I don't think I have a head leak. So we'll just take it step by step, put it back together, and, and see what we get. Now, I did do a leak down test, and I really, I got, I got the same, the same sound count coming out of each one. I'd put each cylinder on top dead center. I'd put uh, approximately 90 psi in the cylinder. The only shifting was, you know, a little bit through the crankcase. Of course, rings are not totally sealed. They have gaps. They, uh, I expect to get some hissing through the ring. Sounded like I was getting some hissing through the exhaust also, but that that hissing also happened on the cylinders that were good. So I'm thinking that hissing might have been, you know, from from the actual crankcase, and and it's just bleeding over. It's hard to hear in here. I'm in a big metal building. Uh, it's always windy out here. Uh, you know, so I can, I, you know, do what I can. So um, anyway, so we're gonna go ahead and put the the uh, stem tower back together. I've got it kind of sitting in there so I don't lose any parts and everything stays clean. But I'm going to take this off, put the new lifters in, put it all back together, and uh, we'll do a compression test. So uh, stay tuned for that. All right, got it all back together, and uh, we're gonna start with cylinder number one, two, three, and then four. We're gonna do a compression test again, compare it to our old numbers, and see what we get. I hope these two don't change. I didn't change anything, but we'll see. If they do, you know, we'll, we'll figure out uh, where to go from there. Getting uh, one, uh, 
95, 95. One sixty-five, one sixty-six, maybe. One fifty-six. Now, cylinder number four was our problem child last week. It was getting one fifteen. I have all the plugs out so I don't have any other pressure built up. Alright, here goes number four. Look at that. 170. Went to, from 115 to 170. I think we fixed our problems, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and button up the valve cover. You can see I'm leaking all over. I'm going to button up the valve cover hook everything else back up and uh, take it out uh, back over here tight to the truck and do a thrust test. Let you in as soon as we get it all hooked up.
So as I got done with the thrust test, I ended up with 445 pounds of thrust at 5500 RPM. I believe that's pretty dang good. So I went and I got the gyro ready to fly, put all my cameras on, and uh, right about then I noticed that there was a storm coming in. So instead of flying, I set up a camera and caught some time lapse of the clouds going by. I hope you enjoy.